So the first thing we need to do is to uh, download the metadata for the Hubbard Brook um, data set. So I'm just going to paste this in here and uh, go to that website that's uh, shown in the presentation. Okay, so if we have a look at this, we've got a bunch of supporting information for the data including a definition of all the columns which is probably one of the most important things and that's got a whole lot of information like units and uh, detection limits and uh, missing value codes and so forth. Alright, so that's the type of information that we're going to need when uh, we're preparing a curated data set with all the metadata. Right, so what I would do is just actually select all of that, um, copy it, and then we can paste that into our spreadsheet, into another tab. Obviously we need to download the Hubbard Brook data uh, itself, so we're going to go to Practicals, Data Analysis, find the session that we're up to, and uh, we'll download the full Hubbard Brook Valley data. So um, it's by default it's asking us if we want to save the file, um, which is what you'd normally do. So I'm going to do that and I will put it in to Hubbard Brook Valley Soil Chem and put it into a folder called data in VT3361. Alright, now if I want to, I can now open that in Excel. Okay, so here's the Excel worksheet and here are our data here. So what we would do now, of course, is to make another tab in this. Uh, and we want to copy the, the metadata and I would just in the first instance paste that in then file save as. It was a CSV file but we want something with multiple tabs so we'll save it as an Excel workbook um, and we'll make a rather ponderous file name there. Right, so you remember from the national health data file that there are a number of different pieces of information that we want to have in there. Um, so we want certainly to have the data, but we want to have a description of the data, so you know, details of the study and the authors and so forth, uh, which we have as it happens on in the first part of the metadata that we've just copied from the website. Uh, we want to be able to have a description of the sheets, um, which in includes the metadata sheets and the data sheets. Uh, we want to define the columns. Now we'll find if we go down in the data uh, that we already have those definition of the columns. So what we can do is simply copy that information, if you like, um, into another sheet which we'll call columns and then I'm going to paste it as values okay um, and given that we probably want to read it we'll uh, make it all fairly legible uh, by adjusting the size of the columns all right, so uh, that we might put um, survey info here because we'll probably end up keeping the stuff at the top uh, of this. Now, now that I've got this information about the columns in another page, what I would tend to do if I, uh, is just delete those columns out so we're not um, duplicating information anywhere. 
All right, so we've got uh, some other metadata here. The missing value codes actually are, are repeated, uh, as far as I can see, in the data set. So we we don't need to include those again anywhere else. All right, and something that it's probably worthwhile doing. Um, useful function in Excel is to go to view, uh, freeze panes, and uh, that lets us see the column headings all the time. It can be quite handy. It can also be a little confusing if you're halfway down and you're wondering where the rest of the data are, but uh, I find that quite useful. And of course, keep on saving it to somewhere secure. In terms of what you need to put in your data sheet, there are some things that need to go in and obviously there are some things that don't need to go in as well. Um, so in this uh, slide gives you a checklist to look out for that. Now what we haven't uh, done is to itemize every single worksheet tab that we think is necessary to comprise the metadata in its entirety, but um, you should be able to work that out from the presentation.